A long time ago, some astronomers had a big problem. When they looked up into the night sky, they couldn't tell how far away most of the stars were. As a matter of fact, before 1912, we could only accurately measure distance within a few hundred light years. Nobody knew how large the Milky Way was, or if stars outside the galaxy even existed at all. All of this changed when a researcher named Henrietta Leavitt made one of the most important discoveries in the history of astronomy. Leavitt's discovery was based on a small, relatively unknown group of stars known as Cepheid variables. These stars are called variables because their brightness changes over time, and Cepheids because the first one discovered was in the constellation Cepheus. Change in brightness can occur in variable stars for all sorts of reasons, but the changes in Cepheids occur due to helium in the star's atmosphere. When the helium is heated, it becomes more opaque, making the Cepheid dimmer, and when it cools, it becomes transparent, making the Cepheid brighter. The change in brightness of a Cepheid over time can be plotted on what is known as a light curve. The amount of time it takes for a Cepheid variable to pass through one full cycle on the light curve is called the period. The periods of Cepheids have a unique trait that separates them from other variables, which is what Henrietta Leavitt discovered back in 1912. At the time, Leavitt was studying Cepheids located in the small Magellanic Cloud, a nearby dwarf galaxy. She noticed that there seemed to be a direct relationship between the period of a Cepheid and its brightness. The Cepheids with the longest periods had the highest average brightness, while those with very short periods were generally quite dim. This revelation was incredibly important to astronomy. Why? Well, for the first time, we could determine a star's true brightness. When looking at normal stars, it was impossible to tell if one that appeared bright was actually bright or just close to us. But with a Cepheid, we could find its true brightness using its period. Then, we could compare its true brightness to its observed brightness to find out its distance. For example, if a Cepheid has a long period but appears very dim from Earth, then it must be very far away since a long period implies a bright star. The most important impact of Cepheid stars, however, has to do with the stars and galaxies around them. When the distance to a Cepheid is found, it can be used as a celestial distance marker, telling us information about how far away the stars around it are. Suddenly, astronomers had a way to find accurate distances to anything remotely close to a Cepheid. This expanded our range of distance measurements from a few hundred light years to a nearly limitless range. All of this new information told us all sorts of things we had never known about distant stars and galaxies. For example, in 1924, Edwin Hubble used Leavitt's period brightness correlation to measure the distance to Cepheids in what he called the Andromeda Nebula, and discovered that it was not a nebula, but one of many distinct, separate galaxies. This was one of the most important discoveries in modern astronomy, proving that the Milky Way was not alone and demonstrating just how enormous our universe is. Almost everything we know about astronomy today, from the Big Bang to the existence of black holes, we know because of Cepheid variables. They are perhaps the most important type of star in the entire universe.